Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video you are going to learn about the Ruby map method. The Ruby map method. So what's the map method and what's it useful for? Well, let's say that you have an array and you want to do something with every element of the array. Like for example, in this case, I have some numbers, some integers, and I might want to multiply them by a given number or something like that. How can you do that? Well, let's take a look at the syntax for map. So the syntax is we need an array and then we say map. And then we need this thing that is called a block. And here we, this is like a variable. So we give it some name, it can be any valid variable name, for example, n for number. And then we can, in here we, we have the logic for what we want to do with this number. So n, we become each of the numbers and we be one, then it will be two, three, so n becomes every every of the elements, each of the elements, right? Just like when you use each. And I will explain the difference between each versus map in a moment. But map, let's go back to map. Let's say that I want to multiply times two, so that's the logic, that's the code, and we put that inside a block. So map knows what to do. And then if I print the output of this, what we get is a new array with the results. So we started with one to three. The logic is to multiply times two and we get two, four, six. So notice that if I print the original array, right? The numbers are still the same. So the original array, the just call array here, is still one to three. What map does is give you a new array, right? So it collects the results of this logic. That's what it does. In fact, there is another name for map and it uses an alias and it's precisely that, it's collect. So collect and map are the same. So collect and map are the same method, their alias. But that's what map does. It collects the result of this logic, of running this logic over every element of the array. Now, what's the difference between this and using each, right? So this is something that a lot of people get confused with, but it's very simple. Easy, let me show you. So each, as you can see here, if I just change collect or map for each, what happens? Well, I get one to three back. Why? Because each is a very primitive, it's a very basic version of map. Okay? So each, the only job of each is to give you the values in here, but it doesn't do anything with these values. So what you get back is the same thing. You get the original array. Now, if you actually want to collect, to collect these values, to save them into a new array, that's when you use map, right? So now notice the difference. Right now it's one, two, three, that's with each. And with map, it changes the two, four, six. Why? Because map is using this logic and is saving the result of using this logic over every element of the array. Of course, this also works with any kind of array. You can have an array of strings, an array of objects, symbols, any kind of array you can use with map. So I hope that's clear. The each method is just looping over the elements, but it doesn't do anything with them. It just gives you the elements. A map collects 
the elements, the results. Now let's look how you can use map with a hash, okay? So this is an array and now we have a hash. So how can you use a hash with map? Because hash also supports the map method. Let me show you. We can do hash the map and then we need two variables. One is the key and the second is the value. So the key in this example will be bacon and apple and then the values will be protein and fruit. So what we get here is these values. And now you can do something with them. For example, we can take the, the value and get the size, right? The size. And what do we get as a result? It's an array of the sizes. So map always gives you an array. Even if what you start with is a hash, or a range or any other kind of object that supports the map method, the output of the map method, the result of using the map method is always going to be an array. Okay, so remember that. So where is this seven and five coming from? Well, they are coming from this logic. So remember this call a block and, and inside the block, is used to give some logic to the method. And the logic is that we take we take the values, which in this case will be protein, then we call size on protein. So this is the same as if it's at the protein and then fruit, right? And we call in size on them. So we are getting the string size. So protein is seven characters length of length, and for it is five. That's why we get this output. Now, what if what you really want is a new hash? You want to change the hash instead of getting an array back. Well, let me show you how you can do that. What you can do is to have a hash, sorry, um, have an array here. Then we have the key first. It's important the order matters here. And then the value with your transformation, with your logic that you want to use, right? So if I do this, what we get is this. We get an array of arrays. This is also called a multi-dimensional array. So this is not yet a hash, but when you have an array like this, you can transform it or convert it into a hash. How? Well, you simply use the 2H, which means to hash method. And now watch what happens right here. We're going to go from this array into a hash. And this new hash now has new values and the values are the size of these strings. So that's how you can use hash with the map method. It's a little bit more complex or complicated because in the hash you have these two things, these two elements you're working with at the same time, right? That's why it's a little bit more complicated but as long as you understand that, and as long as you understand that map gives you always an array. And if you have a two dimensional array like this, you can transform it back into a hash, then you will be fine. And there is another, there is an alternative to this, which I have another video about, it's called transform transform keys. So you might want to search for a video that I have where I show you how to use the transform keys, which is and transfer values as well. Transfer values, which is, uh, in my opinion, a better way to 
do map and get a hash back. Okay. So these are the oh the by the way these are specific to hash. These are not for arrays. So one last thing, let's go back to the array, okay? So the array we had before, one, two, three. Oh let, let's do another. Let's do how about um let's do an array of strings, right? So this is an array of strings as you can see here, right? So this is the string one, the string two, the string three. What if I want to take this and convert it into an array of integers? Well, map is perfect for that. If I do array map, then n, and then remember we have for logic, and the logic is to use to i to integer. And if I print this, as you can see, we get the result. So these are strings. So this percent %w is like a shortcut for creating strings. And these are strings. And now we have integers. And here's a little trick for you. You can shortcut this like this to i. So this is the same thing. If I run the code, you see it's the same. I can add more numbers. And you can see it works, right? The only difference is that this is shorter, right? It's a shortcut or a shorthand way to do the same thing. So if you have a method like this that you're going to be calling on every element, you can use this syntax right here. So that's the Ruby map method. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video and so more people can find this video. Thanks all for watching. If you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and visit my website, rubyguides.com, rubyguides.com. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in another video.